Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make use of Postgres constraints and functions uh, to perform data validations, right? Postgres database supports a lot of constraints uh, that you can configure on tables and columns. For example, there is a unique constraint, there is a foreign key constraint, there is a check constraint and so on, right? Um, we can also create functions uh, which can be called uh, in a trigger uh, before an insertion happens into the table, right? So in this example, I'm going to quickly show you a few use cases where you can make use of uh, all of these built-in uh, constraints uh, in Postgres. So for example, I have a users table. Uh, I have uh, a few columns, name, user type, and email. Uh, a quick way to ensure uh, some data validation is uh, for example the email column will always be a unique uh, value right uh, a email cannot repeat for a different user so i'm going to say uh, the email will be a unique key so i'm going to add a unique key constraint for this particular column and uh, this will ensure that uh, the value of the email can always be only be unique for uh, different rows right and uh, the next constraint that we can add uh, is through check constraint. So we can do some conditional checks uh, on the columns of these tables. Uh, for example, the user type uh, column. Uh, let's say the user type column has uh, two possible values. It could be either uh, the value of the user type could be either the user or the moderator, right? Uh, so I can add a constraint saying user type check and the check expression can be uh, user type uh, equals user or the user type equals moderator, right? So what this check constraint will uh, do is before uh, you try to insert into the user table, it will check the value of uh, the user underscore type column and see if the value is equal to either of uh, user or moderator. Right, so this is just a quick way to ensure that you validate some data before inserting. Uh, another quick example I can show is uh, we have a tweets table, um, so the length of a tweet uh, is limited to a few characters, right? So we can ensure that uh, by using the check constraint. So I can say that uh, in a check constraint, uh, tweet character limit, I can just name the constraint name. And I'm going to say the content. Uh, so we need to find the length of the content uh, to and see if it's less than some characters, right? So the content field, uh, the length of the content can be identified using char underscore length function. So Postgres has a few functions on strings uh, and char character underscore length is one example. Uh, the short form is char length. Uh, so I'm going to make use of that function and this is going to return me the length of this particular field and I'm going to check if the character length of content is less than or equal to 280 uh, because Twitter allows 280 characters, right? Uh, and so this constraint will uh, will automatically be checked by the database and uh, you don't need to write any custom code to do this validation, right? So let's test this out quickly. Uh, I can try to do a mutation on first the user table I'm going to insert one user and see if the email is unique, right? So uh, before doing that, I already have an email uh, with Praveen at Hustler.io. So let me try to insert another uh, value with the same uh, email ID, right? So I'm going to say name and uh, I'm going to give the email, which is going to be the same email id uh, because we've added a unique constraint uh, we should ideally be getting an error and uh, i've also i'm also going to add a user type right the user type is going to be user and uh, as you can see uh, it says duplicate key value violates unique constraint right so because the email id is not unique it, we're getting an error from postgres right now let me actually try it with a different email and uh, yeah the query goes through right 
Now uh, let's verify the user type validation. So the user type, uh, we added a check constraint to see if uh, the value is either user or moderator, right? Now let's say I just put in a random string and uh, this should also give me a check constraint violation. And finally, uh, we can also check uh, the tweet validation that we did. Uh, so we can try a simple object and uh, I'm gonna say content of the tweet. So I need to see if more than 280 characters, uh, obviously some uh, lesser content uh, characters should be allowed. Um, I also need to give the created by uh, value, which will be like one, for example. And uh, I can obviously insert this because the content of the tweet is pretty low. Let me try um, some text generator and let me copy this generated text. Now I'm going to replace this. Right. Now let's test this. Uh, now we can get a check constraint violation saying that uh, it violates the constraint tweet character limit. Right? So this is just a simple way to quickly ensure that uh, you're doing some basic validations at the database layer. Uh, and you don't need to write any custom code to do this, right? Now, uh, what about some complex use cases? Uh, we can make use of uh, Postgres functions and triggers. So let's say uh, I'm going to uh, check with, from a list of blacklisted email addresses, whether a user is blacklisted, uh, whether a particular email address is blacklisted and uh, before inserting into the user table, right? So, uh, I need to do a conditional check before insert. Uh, so I'll probably use a trigger uh, on insert and I'll probably be calling a function, a Postgres function, which will do uh, the validation of whether the, the email address which is uh, being given is present in the blacklist list, right? So I'll need to write some Postgres function and I'm just going to paste this function. Uh, let's look at the function definition uh, to see what's happening. Uh, we are declaring a function uh, with the name check blacklisted emails uh, and we've declared one variable called incoming email to store the value of the argument uh, email into this variable. And uh, this is the more important part, right? So here we are checking uh, if, uh, so we are uh, selecting the email value from the blacklist, the list of emails on the blacklist table and we are checking if the email is equal to the incoming email that is coming from the insert and if so we are raising an exception to say the value is blacklisted uh, we can also say the email is blacklisted and we are ending it and we are returning it right so if this check passes basically which means if the, in if the incoming email is part of the blacklist email then uh, we are raising an exception right so I'm going to run this uh, blacklisted email uh, function. Now, uh, the next step is to uh, create a trigger on insert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a trigger called insert user. And uh, before insert or update on users, uh, we are checking for each row, execute this procedure, uh, which is check blacklisted emails, right? So it's a pretty simple definition. I'm going to click on run. Now, uh, this check blacklisted emails function will be called on every insert or update on the user's table, right? So I'm going to uh, now try out a simple mutation to check if this validation is working. So I'm going to say insert users one. I'm going to try out an object and I need to give a name and I need to give an email. So let me try out a random email ID, right? And I need to say created, a, created a will be a default value. So I, I don't need to worry about that. And I need to get back the ID. So now this says that user type is violating a not null constraint, got it. So now we need to give the user type, right? Which will be of either type user or moderator. And of course this value goes in uh, without any problems, right? 
Now let's go to the data tab and see the list of blacklisted emails. I have blacklisted my own email ID and a couple of other email IDs, right? Uh, let's try out this particular email and see if this is being uh, allowed. Uh, I'm going to change this value of email to black user at blacklisted.com and uh, we can see that uh, the email user blacklisted, right? So we're getting a Postgres uh, error from the function. Trigger basically executed and we're getting back an error on return, right? So this is another way to uh, write functions uh, where you can write some bit of custom logic uh, within the database code. So if you're familiar with Postgres functions uh, and if you can leverage the functionality of that, uh, you can simply define functions and triggers and uh, you can basically make use of Postgres built-in features to do with data validations. All right, uh, that's it from me in this example. Uh, I'll see you around uh, with a different example later. Thank you.